Tower Stephanie Link. She's made her way here to uh, Post 9. Traffic has been an absolute disaster this week in the city. I really appreciate you making the effort I'm to come here. Happy to be here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Costco, you don't own it, right? But you, you did. I did. I have owned it for many years. Every time I sell it, I hit myself <laughs> because it's such a good company. It's a value proposition story. It has a loyal customer base, 90% renewal rates. So we knew the same store sales numbers because they released them every month. Mm -hmm. That was a good number, I think. Yeah, we'll look at margins for sure. Um, but traffic, I want to I want to look into the traffic numbers because it's in August, it was 2.9%, which was weaker, the weakest since February of 21. Mm. We know we've seen traffic weak across the board in retail sales, but Target and Walmart, believe it or not, had good traffic numbers. So we'll go through the numbers. If this were to pull back, this is absolutely a candidate to be a core holding. It's just still too expensive. Uh, okay. Uh, we'll follow it. You see the stock is, uh, is down slightly after reporting here in overtime. So let me get your reaction here now to what happened yesterday. Uh, with what yeah. the Fed did and, and perhaps more importantly with what they said because uh, they out-hawked the hawks is what Steve Leisman characterized it as right right afterwards. Is that how you saw it? Yeah, absolutely. There was nothing positive from his commentary yesterday. Really hawkish. And we were expecting hawk, right, as you said. Um, I think that their revisions to Fed funds was really eye-opening at 4.6 percent. That's an average, right? So it might even go over that. It could be 5 percent. Uh, unemployment going to 4.4 percent. GDP coming down. And all this inflation talk, they don't expect inflation to get better until 2025. So I know a lot could happen between now and 25, mm -hmm. but there's just still so many unknowns. And we've talked about it all year long. This right. is why the market has been in a choppy range, well, because there's a lag on the Fed and their moves, right? What does it do to the economy? What does it do to earnings? Oh, no, by the way, we had 17 central bankers this week yeah. raise rates. And we have another dozen next week that are meeting. But see, for somebody who always tries to see the, the glass as, as half full. I do. Um, have, is this forced you to switch? Is there too much negativity out there to be constructive in the market right now? If the market wasn't down 21 percent year to date, I would be nervous. But we're already pricing in a lot of bad news. And as we talked on halftime on Tuesday, I'm not as crazy about the overall market, right? It's not that compelling. But there are some companies that I've actually been nibbling at. Bought back into GXO yesterday. That was a name that is down 55 percent, trades at 14 times earnings. The number one, the top three logistics companies. I was going to say, you world. want to be buying a logistics company now? One that can execute? Sure, okay. I do. And their sales pipeline at $2.5 billion. It's a shot across the bow at FDX? Uh, it should be, <laughs> because they haven't delivered in a very long time. But I also added to Accenture, and Accenture had a really good quarter today. Total revenues of 15%, margins in line, guiding a little light just on currency, though. So I think there are places where I feel confident in the earnings. Maybe they come down a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I still feel good about the long-term stories. So do you believe or you subscribe to what Liz Young was telling people this morning on Squawk? Uh, I'd be buying all the way down is what she said. I think you can drip in, and this is a time where you, you try to do it methodically. I'm reading her exact quote yeah. for you since you might have missed it earlier. Uh, rather than try to pull out all your money in and call, call the bottom. If you're a long-term investor, what about that strategy right now? I think that's exactly what I've been doing all along. I had a little extra cash. We talked about having a little bit of cash and patience, and this is exactly why you have those two things, right? Because you don't know how to time the market. I've been doing this for 30 years. I can't time the market, but I can focus on fundamentals, and if they, are, if they remain strong, maybe they saw a little bit, but if they remain strong for the long term, absolutely. You want to find number one and number two companies at this point in time that are truly on sale, that get thrown out with kind of baby with the bathwater, and that's kind of what I'm trying to do. We owe you one for making the effort to get here, which I know personally was not easy. It's my pleasure. I think you're coming back later. I, yeah. I think. We'll see. Thank you. Thanks. That's Stephanie Link.